to invest make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell i want to come in and talk to you guys about how to spend your tax refund okay you need to be watching this before you get your tax refund i mean afterwards but majority of us we need to get it before we start spending the money so do me a favor hashtag pretty gang in the comments let's get into it all right so the first thing that you can do with your tax refund is open a business of course this is a business channel this is a let's go ahead and invest in our self channel so definitely start a business um you can bring in money to your household you can establish a brand and here's the fun thing here's the the thing i love about um the internet being online is you have the opportunity to start businesses with a hundred dollars or less currently some of my favorite business ideas is definitely one opening an online boutique you can do that through poshmark you can do that through etsy you can do that through ebay um you can even open up your own store big cartel shopify um the next thing of course one of my favorites is start a braiding business if you know how to braid there's money in doing people's hair even if it's not braiding if you know how to do hair definitely look into starting a braiding business the next thing you can do is you can coach if you know how to do something that is very um unique or something that you know a lot of people need, definitely look into coaching. Things like life coaching, femininity coaching, dating coaching, like fitness coaching. There are so many opportunities in starting a business. You can start a business for $100 or less. So definitely look into that. The next thing you can do with your tax refund, debt down, get rid of some of this debt. Great thing about getting rid of your debt is one, it boosts your credit. Two, it makes more money available to you. And three, it brings more money into your household. So some things you might want to check out is maybe paying the smallest bill first, right? Or paying your smallest debt off first. Definitely do want to look into Dave Ramsey's uh, snowball effect, where pretty much you pay the smallest bill first. Then you take that same money you were using to pay the smallest bill and you put it to your next bill. And you just keep doing that until you are debt free. And also, if you purchase something maybe that's not on your credit, that's why I didn't say credit. I just said debt, right, or debt. Um, say if you paid, bought something. Say last year you bought a couch and you still owe like six, seven hundred dollars on a couch. Go pay the six, seven hundred dollars off. That can be one less bill going out of your household. Okay, so definitely you want to look into debt. Stepping down when you get your tax refund. The next thing you want to think about doing is creating some type of fund. Now, everybody's different. So, you might want an emergency fund. You might want a Christmas fund. You might want a birthday fund or you might want a sinking fund. You may want to do all of these or you might want to do one of these. But you definitely need to create some type of fund. Of course, again, Dave Ramsey talks about the emergency fund. Pretty much where you have $1,000 in there because there are things that are going to happen in life. Like um, something with the house, something with the car, something with furniture. Maybe some um, something comes up where you have to buy a gift for somebody that you weren't even thinking about, right? You there may be a point where um, your hours might be cut at work, or the you know the worst, or maybe potentially getting laid off of work. You want to have this money set aside to kind of carry you through. Um, for me personally, I have three of these. I have emergency Christmas and I have sinking. I don't have a birthday fund. But um, you definitely want to look into this, calculating your your current bills, thinking about how much money you can put aside weekly or bi-weekly for your fund. You definitely want to look into this, okay? So the way sinking funds work, say, for example, for many of us or some of us, we may have Amazon Prime. Okay, Amazon Prime, I think at this point it's $110, $120. Now, you think of that bill as like, oh my gosh, $110. But if you do a sinking fund and you divide that into 12, that's technically only $10 a month. So you pretty much have this $10 a month coming out to a account, which is your sinking fund, so that when it's time to pay Amazon, you're not paying this lump sum of $120. You've been putting up $10 a month up to when you need to pay your Amazon so you can pay it in full, but you've been putting away a small amount to add up to that big amount in the long run. So you definitely want to look into starting some type of fund with your tax refund. The next thing you can do is for some of us who are interested in purchasing a home, 
you can take your tax refund money and let that be your down payment starter, right? So for many of us, you may go the traditional route and you're going to need a full $10,000. Or for some of us, we go through programs. Um, you can go through programs such as NACA. You can go through FFA or you can do use your VA loan. So your down payment may not be the $10,000. $10,000. It may be $5,000. So if you get a, you know, hefty amount of money for your tax refund, you can take half of that or all of that and put it to the side and let it be your down payment or your down payment starters for some of us, right? For some of us, we may not get that big of a tax refund. So the reason why I said down payment starter is because at least this is somewhere you can start from. So definitely go get pre-approved. Figure out how much money you're going to need for your down payment, depending on the amount of house you're going to buy. And save a portion of your tax refund to start your down payment and then continue to save so that this time next year, you can have the full amount or maybe even before then. You'll plan to have the full amount, but this is so you can start getting that money together. The next thing you could do is start your kids' credit off properly, okay? So something you can do is, one, you get a card that's in good standing, okay? Pay it on time for six months straight. And what you want to do with this card, because you know it's going to be a card that you're going to attach your child to, is you definitely want to look into... You definitely want to look into... Um, like, my phone is going off. Somebody's talking about they want to do a home baking. Okay, we're going to have to talk about that later. Okay, so you take that, you, you use that card and you make small payments a month, right? Or you make small transactions. Maybe buy a cup of coffee. Maybe you put in a, you know, fill up on a gas tank and make sure you're paying this back off in six months. Then in six months, you add your child as an authorized user, Okay. And you keep that card in good standing. This is definitely good for, and I put kids here, but this is good for teenagers because you can start your teenager off with credit properly because they will have one credit in good standing in their name when they turn 18. So you want to look into something like that and you can use your refund to start this off, right? The last thing you want to do is invest in yourself. Learn something, learn how to cook, learn how to bake, learn how to code, learn how to blog, learn how to dance, learn some type of software. It can be anything you want to learn, but you definitely want to invest in yourself. Now, I didn't go the route of telling you guys, go on a trip, buy a purse, you know, get a new car. If that's what you want to do with your tax refunds, be my guest. But the reason why I'm saying these things are because these are things to invest in yourself, Right. Learning how to cook or learning how to bake or learning how to blog, that's you investing in yourself. Setting up your children's credit or your teenager's credit properly, right? Having them start their life off with a 750 credit score, a 700 credit score, that's a good place for your teen or your kid to be. Having a down payment starter, that's awesome because you know in the long run, for some of us, not everybody, but you're going to eventually want to own. Why not start now with money you actually have now and then having a sinking fund an emergency fund a birthday fund a christmas fund there's no harm in that because these things come around especially birthdays or christmas or bills they come around every year we cannot avoid them so at least be prepared for them when they show up so if you do have a flat tire you're prepared if you have to donate to a specific cause for your family or for a friend you have that money set aside for that and then having your debt down, boosting your credit, bringing more money home, paying off these small bills, it allows you to feel a little bit more free and being able to purchase things that you want or you need and not feel a pressure because your debt is down or you have credit available to you. And definitely starting a business for, and there's been a debate that I keep hearing going around that opening a business isn't, isn't for everybody. Absolutely. But there's a difference between a business and a side hustle. There's nothing wrong with having a side hustle. Bringing in an extra $200 to $500 in your household, for some of our households, that would change the game for us. So you may not have a full blown out, I'm going to go open up a boutique on this corner in my neighborhood. But if you have an online boutique or you're doing reselling and selling things that you have in your house already, what is the harm in bringing in extra money or taking $100 from your income tax money and starting a business 
and it could be something that maybe you could do, but it could be by yourself. It could be something you and your spouse can do a project on. It could be something that you and your kids could do a project on. There's so much more about opening a business than just opening a business and getting money. It is about establishing systems and processes. It's about passing down legacy. It's about passing down something that you know how to do that you gave to your family or your kids they may not use it in the same way but it's definitely something to look into so you guys i hope this was helpful on how to spend your money with your tax refund and i'll be talking to you guys later bye you guys